Hello everybody, how are you all doing? It is good to finally see you again. My name is Rob, welcome back to my channel Rule of Two Review, where today I want to talk about The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and the fact that apparently we've gotten confirmation that I don't think a lot of us wanted to hear that there won't be DLC for Tears of the Kingdom. So believe it or not, we are creeping up on the four month anniversary of the release of Tears of the Kingdom which of course feels impossible because time is constantly going by way too fast for any of us. Of course, this was Nintendo's biggest game of the year and it is one of the biggest, if not the biggest video game release in the entirety of 2023. Of course, Starfield definitely is up there making a case for itself as well and I've actually been playing that for a couple of hours and I'm really enjoying it so far. But when it comes to Zelda, this game was a big deal. It was six years in the making. We all loved Breath of the Wild. It took the world by storm. We knew Tears of the Kingdom was coming for four years, and eventually it released. And while there is a contingent of people out there who maybe aren't the happiest with the final product, I am not one of them. As you guys know, if you follow my channel, I've talked about at length how incredible I think the game is. Now, one of the many things that people were excited about when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom was not only the release of the game, but the prospect of future DLC. We all remember that the original Breath of the Wild did have some very cool DLC that released with it as well, and I very much enjoyed that DLC. I played it all the way, and I got all the champions extra powers, and I beat all those extra bosses, and I just completed all of the main stuff when it comes to Breath of the Wild, and I really liked that DLC. But with Tears of the Kingdom, again, a lot of us expected that they would probably do something similar, but we now have confirmation via Famitsu that Nintendo is saying there are no plans for DLC for this game. So Genki over on Twitter actually translated the Famitsu interview with IG Enuma, as we all know is the very famous Zelda series producer and director of some of the games. And this is what Aonuma said, actually, about DLC. Again, this is all via translation from Genki, so credit to him. I'll link this stuff below. But here is what he says. He says in his tweet, There will be no DLC for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Quote, We have no plans to release additional content at this time, but that is because we feel like we have done all we can do to create play in that world. Again, said by IG Aonuma. He continues to translate, This time, the reason we decided to make a sequel to the previous game in the first place was because we thought it would be worth experiencing new ways to play in Hyrule. If such reasons arise, then we may return to the same world. Whether it is a sequel or new work, I think it will be a completely new way to play, so I hope you will look forward to it. So that's about the long and the short of it. Aonuma himself lays out that there are no current plans for DLC for this game. Now, it's worth noting something, which is that they've long since confirmed that Tears of the Kingdom itself, as a sequel, was born out of more DLC ideas they had for Breath of the Wild. Again, they came out with that initial DLC for Breath of the Wild. Am I remembering it was called Champions Ballad or Battle Ballad of the Champions? I should know, and I'll look it up and confirm in a second. But they made that initial kind of wave of DLC and that big story additional content, which, again, I thought was really good. Um, and then... When they announced the sequel to Breath of the Wild, they had confirmed, this was way back in 2019, you guys, pre-pandemic even, they had confirmed that their decision to make a sequel to Breath of the Wild was because they had all of these ideas for more DLC for the game, and it became so big and so epic in scale, and they had so many ideas about what they wanted to do with it, that it was too small to release as DLC. Instead, it made sense to make it as just a sequel game. And of course, years later, that just turned out to be Tears of the Kingdom, where we're going into the sky and floating in islands, and we're going to the depths below, and we're using Ultra Hand to craft things throughout the world, and solve the shrines, and the addition of Ganondorf, and all of these really cool things that I really loved in the game. And so I say that because it's kind of a funny and interesting coincidence, you know, a little bit circular, to see that Tears of the Kingdom started as DLC, became its own game, and now that it's done, they're saying we're not going to be making t DLC for this game. And so now we start to talk about how do we feel about this and what does this mean for the future and what are they planning for Zelda. I think there's a lot we can glean from this. I can tell you that I'm a little disappointed, but also I kind of don't really mind either. I'm disappointed because I would have liked some DLC. Like if they made a $20 DLC that had like 5 to 10 hours worth of new areas to explore and new story content or whatever, especially if it was new Sky Islands. You guys know I talked about it so much how much I was excited for the sky, and I mostly liked what they did. There are some issues 
with how they overall delivered the ability to travel throughout the sky, but in general, I still loved it. And I think that DLC could have provided opportunities for them to maybe realize that idea a little bit more, at least something that would have made me happier. But also, I don't really mind them just saying, we've completed this game, and Aonuma himself is kind of saying this, we've, we've completed every idea, we threw so much at the wall in Tears of the Kingdom, there's so much you can do, you can create stuff, you know, to infinity and beyond, basically, in that game, there's so much content based on how you choose to play it, that there's nothing else for us to do. And so then he goes on to say that, He's a little bit weird in how he says, if we think of new ideas, we may revisit this game, which is a weird thing to say, either commit to DLC or commit to no DLC, or it might be a sequel or whatever. So I think he's really just laying the foundations for they've already moved on to the next game, or at least planned to move on to the next game. And I think that they're probably in the early phases of developing whatever the next Zelda game is going to be. And of course, with the fact that this all coincides with what we think is the last full year of the Nintendo Switch, I think that the next generation is probably factoring into this decision as well. Personally, I can't see a world where the next generation Nintendo Switch or Nintendo hardware isn't part of whatever they're deciding to do with this game. We have to look at when this game released. It released in the middle of the year of 2023, which is the seventh year of the Switch's life, okay? And we all kind of know that a Switch 2 thing is probably happening sometime in the next, like, 12 or so months, right? 12 to 18 months, 6 to 18 months. We're going to probably see this thing. It's going to probably release. Switch is doing fantastic, but Nintendo needs to be planning ahead. They can't just ride the Switch until it runs out of gas completely and then try to save their business model. They have to be forward-thinking. And so it's impossible for me to believe that we're not going to see a Switch 2 next year in 2024. So Tears of the Kingdom releasing now in the middle of 2023 in their seventh year of life tells me that they knew that they made this great, epic, huge scale game. It sold like crazy. It reviewed like crazy. It's done. You don't need to make DLC for this. With new hardware coming, why focus on last gen hardware Zelda products when you can instead start focusing your efforts on the next game, the next Zelda game? Whatever that is, and I've discussed this in, in months past as well, if it's going to be a direct sequel to Tears of the Kingdom and maybe a third game using this engine and this layout of the world of Hyrule, these character models for Link and Zelda continuing this exact story, or if they reboot it and refresh it like they normally do and like I kind of hope they do, I think that they're focused on the next Zelda game after Tears of the Kingdom that's a new mainline console entry, and they're working on next generation hardware. 99.9% .9 I guarantee it. They are working on next gen hardware for the next Zelda game. And now, you might feel differently about this than I do or other folks do, but personally, if that's what's happening, and I'm speculating, but again, I feel 99.9% .9 confident that that's what's happening, these comments about no DLC tells me they're already working on the next game, and of course that's going to be on a next generation piece of hardware. So, you may feel differently, but the way I feel about it, I'm good with that, man. If that's truly what's happening behind the scenes, give me the next generation console, give me the next generation Zelda game. You know, whether or not I want it to be a sequel to Tears of the Kingdom, like I said, I kind of just want it to be another refresh, rebooted version of, of Zelda and, and do something new again. But the fact that it could come on next generation hardware is so exciting. And would I welcome DLC for Tears of the Kingdom? Yes. Like I said, improve the sky stuff, add more story stuff, add more areas to explore, more shrines. That would be fantastic. But I, I just feel like we're in the phase of the Switch's life, even though it's still selling pretty well. And even though, yes, I think it's going to become the best selling hardware of all time. I think it will surpass the PS2 in the next two or three years in lifetime sales. They still are planning for that Switch 2, man. And so Zelda is one of their top tier franchises, right? Zelda, Mario, Pokemon. I think you could put Animal Crossing probably in that camp now as well. Uh, Mario Kart. And so Zelda being in that very, very cream of the crop top tier of their franchises, they need it to be a big hit next generation game when that next hardware is on the market. And so that means the next Zelda game is probably four or five years away. But personally, I don't mind because it's going to be incredible. And I love to know that... I love to know. I love to think and predict that they're already making those plans for next generation Zelda. And so I don't know, man. I, I would be curious to know how a lot of you guys feel. Do you also 
feel like it's more exciting and a better choice for them to just move on to the next game and to the next generation of hardware? Or are you just tragically disappointed that we're not getting DLC for Tears of the Kingdom because you wanted it so badly? And if so, even though I might not feel the same, I understand that because it would be cool to see DLC. So if that's what you wanted and you're upset or sad about the fact that we're not getting it, that's fine. I'd love to hear why, you know, just to kind of understand and gauge where everyone's feelings about this is. Because this is a big deal. DLC was something that most of us thought was basically a foregone conclusion. And so now that we're like hearing that they're just not going to do it, it's a pretty big blow to what we thought the future of Tears of the Kingdom was going to be. But now it seems like it's a one and done game. It's an incredible experience. You can put in 500 hours into this game and still find new stuff to do. So I don't know. How do you guys feel about it? Do you like this? Do you not? Are you excited for next gen Zelda? What do you think? You know how I feel. And that's about it.